wanted to make a gear change, but we just couldn't take the chance. Well, I jumped right into just streaming, and I didn't check uh, too much, but anyway, ah. <laughs> good to see you. I want to do Charlotte today. This this race, the Winston Select, starting with the All-Star race, and then the rest, such a good little like bunch of drivers and crew chiefs and a lot of background that might help people that weren't alive in 94 <laughs> or old enough to remember 94 races and why all of our heroes are so special to us like uh, the people you're going to see in this uh, video another thing too I had told you in the last uh, broadcast that Joe Nemechek was named Front Row Joe, basically based on this season, I would say. And, you know, last season, whatever, I don't know. But 93, they finished fifth in points. They didn't have the finishes they want, but they had a lot of the good qualifying. So, anyway, um, here's another race that Joe is in the front row. The following is a special presentation on T. My gain goes over on all of this, so I don't know if it's annoying or not. I don't know how to adjust it if it is. It cuts out their sound when I talk, so I'll try to be more conscious of that. Tonight, Clay is host to the Sports All-Star Evening. In the brief history of the Winston Select, the spin to win. in the grass and the ultimate spinning sliding smashing finale a night when the unimaginable happens i don't know about the rules there's racing he's trying to win i was too that's because there are no rules on this night of night unpredictable fireworks producing action Get ready for a flat-out, full-moon Saturday night full of action. I do believe this was the first and night race, though. So. million reasons to celebrate. Even though it's a little bit of a sketch video, I thought there might be some pretty cool paints. I glanced through a little of it. They're going to have a big wreck pretty soon. Saturday in May. They've been packing them into Charlotte Motor Speedway since noon today for the Winston Select. Over 100,000 people are on hand just north of the city of Charlotte. They've been racing all around the track all afternoon. The Sportsman 100 is now just a couple of laps from completion. The division's so crash-prone, they start their races single file. But they're exciting to watch. And they're training the stars of the future in this division and in front of a huge crowd. They've had legends car one of the condominiums that overlooks Charlotte Motor Speedway here. Normally he's there watching what's going on, but he graciously agreed to come down and talk to me a little bit tonight. In addition to three wins, you've won over $977,000 in the previous nine Winstons. This is almost like a Dale Earnhardt benefit. Wow, that's, that's hard to believe, really. Uh, it's, it's really started out, you was really wondering what it was all about or what, how it would go off, but uh, it's turned into something great, and we really appreciate everything Winston does for us. And, uh, uh, to be a three-time winner is pretty exciting. Uh, 
I just uh, can't say enough about the folks. So folks here at uh, Charlotte, for that matter, we're running it under the lights. It's even made it, made it more exciting. So, heck, I'm ready for the night. Well, he's starting kind of far back in the pack, but there's nothing that he likes better than to win here at his hometown track of Charlotte Motor Speedway. Keep your eye on Dale Earnhardt. I'll guarantee you he'll be up front. It looks pretty racy, Glenn, and on this night, he's been tough to beat. Uh, usually, Buddy Baker, we see more traditional programming on TN on a Saturday night, so for some folks, this is kind of new. What should they expect tonight? Well, they can expect a bare-knuckle fight, what they can expect. <laughs> I tell you, there is no rules. They go at it, and the best man will win, and it's an exciting race. Y'all stay with us. What about strategy for this race? How do you win this thing? <laughs> strategy. <laughs> the biggest thing, if you're not in the lead, you better get there in a hurry. And if you are in the lead, you better protect it. Because somebody wants AC. Just as bad as you do. It's a very untraditional event. We'll run a qualifying race for drivers that have not recently won on the circuit to get into the all-star tilt. And then the race itself will be run in three segments of short Saturday night style racing, ending in a 10-lap shootout. If you're new to the sport, this is going to be fun. And if you're not, you know it's coming. You're sure to enjoy it. We'll be back with the Winston Select from Charlotte Motor Speedway after this. Okay. Tonight's exclusive coverage of the Winston Select on TNN is brought to you by... I wasn't here personally. I was in Florida at this time, I believe. Taking the country by storm. By Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. By your Ford truck dealer. Ford trucks, the best never rest. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Does it say what year, what day it was? Ronnie Sewell is being honored in victory lane. He's just defeated Jerry Rector, Marty Ward, Paul Shaver, and Bobby Fox Jr. to win the Winston Select Sportsman 100, one of the preliminary events. May 21st. Oh, the the no, I was still in, Ma in, tires. in Massachusetts tires till June. The good years here. Man who's been following that story is Randy Pemberton. Well, Mike Joy, you're right. It's been a race okay. within a race on the Winston Cup Series this year. Goodyear has won all 10 Winston Cup races, although Hoosier has copped a couple of poles, including the pole position for tonight's running of the Winston Select Open. The Hoosier tire is said to be as much as four-tenths of a second quicker, but that's in cool weather. When they ran this afternoon in the heat, the Hoosier tire was not nearly as quick. Now, both the representatives for Goodyear and Hoosier said that their tires should run at least 100 miles. Now, they're falling off hopefully the same distance. Depending on who you talk to in the garage area, the Hoosier could be a little quicker. Maybe the Goodyear will last a little longer. That is going to be the question. How long will the Hoosier tire last? If it's four-tenths of a second quicker and it lasts, that's about 50, that's about 50 yards a lap. Now, we'll have to see what happens when the checkered flag drops. Now, with all the facts and figures that surround all the festivities here tonight, let's take a look at the Haviland update. From the Million Dollar First, the leader of the first two segments of the Winston, each get $50,000, and it's two hundred dollars to the winner of the shootout. The race will run in three segments. Segments one and two, 30 laps each, with a break for a pit stop and a final 10-lap shootout. Even qualifying for this race was different. Three laps with a two-tire pit stop in the middle of the three laps. I love that. Buddy Wallace, Buddy Parrott, and the Miller Genuine Draft Penske South Team, $50,000. It took them just 10.13 seconds to fit two right side tires to the Miller Genuine Draft Ford. Rusty took off, completed the final lap, and earned 50 grand. Joe Nemechek knocked four tenths of a second off Alan Kulwicki's track record qualifying to win the pole for the Winston Select Open. Well, we're pushing the car out to the uh, grid right Papa now. Joe in the white shirt. And Joe, first guy His to wife go beside him. miles an hour Charlotte Motor Speedway. That was some lap. It definitely was. You know, it was it was kind of a, a weird practice. We only got a couple laps of practice, and uh, we blew a motor up. So I didn't really know what the car was going to do, but it felt good the first time I went out. So we decided what we were going to do to the car, and I just had one of those perfect laps. Well, indeed, it was perfect. You're on Hoosier tires. A lot of talk going around. Will the Hoosiers last? I'm going to have to say yes. You know, we've done some long runs here. Bob Newton has done his homework. Uh, I think the Hoosier tires are definitely going to be a factor tonight. And I think Joe Nemechek is definitely going to be a factor in this Winston Open. If those Hoosier tires hold up, man, he's going to be tough to beat. Johnny Bacek was the fastest of 11 drivers to break the track record in qualifying for the Winston Select Open. Buddy Baker won that race in 1987 and then came all the way to third place in the Winston itself before having in. 
the one thing there, see, Dad worked with Joe the three years prior, and he was still on his Bush team here in 94. I think I played that race already. I played all the nine races that Dad, Dad's car was racing in, I believe, except for Talladega and... We can look at that, or the Glen, maybe. I can't remember which one. There's a couple in there I, I might not have seen, but I really wanted to see this one. This is kind of Joe's transition away from working as much full-time with my father and going on to his uh, career. My dad was one that still also is one that likes to work with young drivers that are brand new in the sport in trouble thought you might win the win both ends of that and a lot of cash that day what did it mean to you to win the winston open well several things uh first off let me tell you it's worth twenty eight thousand dollars and then eighteen thousand dollars to get into the winston but for me it was a turnaround for the season because it started some momentum that kept us in the fight through the year and really uh brought our team together so this is a turnaround place it's you know an old whole far type race and man it means a lot to be in that winston for your sponsor that was your first win of the year that season? That was my last win in 1987, <laughs> and uh, it meant a lot to me because it was my own race team, and, and uh, I had a great time, and it really turned the team around that year. Well, a fellow like Joe Nemechek, who's seen limited success on the Winston Cup circuit, running hard, running well, what's this mean to him to be sitting up on the front row in front of 100,000 folks here and trying to be one of the six drivers that'll transfer into the main event? Well, Mike, we're overlooking one thing. Most of these guys' shops are right around this area, and bragging rights, when you're sitting down talking to everybody, means a lot. But for Joe Nemechek, this means that he can run with the best of them, and there is no easy way tonight. Either race is going to be extra tough. Well, folks, we'll be here to bring it all to you, the Winston Open and the Winston Select tonight. And we'll be running our 800 number if you have questions about the sport or tonight's telecast. We'll pass them on down to the pits, get you some answers, handle them up top. Here's our 800 number, 1-800-451-7331. I also believe that this was, like I said, the first race they ran under the lights, if I'm not mistaken. I thought they mentioned that when I was previewing it. Said, hmm. Winston Select here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. You see the grounds packed with automobiles that have brought way over 100,000 fans to this facility. And the cars for the Winston Open lined up along the pit lane in their starting formation as the drivers are introduced. Here's Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, uh, when I was talking to Joe Nemechek, I'm so used to talking to these guys, I forgot to point out it's a rookie on the first row, and on the outside of the first row is another rookie, Ward Burton. Ward has had kind of a tough time this year. He's adjusting the steering wheel right now, but Ward, things are looking really good tonight. Well, Glenn, the uh, guy did a good job for me getting his car up on the front row, and we came down here and tested last week, and that's probably why we're sitting up there. You know, an inexperienced team really don't have much of a background. Speaking of background, really not sure what it's going to do tonight because it's the first time we run at night. But if we're not running good, we'll use this uh, as a test for the 600. So we're going to do the best we can. Hopefully we'll be in the top six. Good to see Ward Burton back up front where I think he belongs. Now a little further back in the pack is my colleague Randy Pemberton. Well, Michael Waltrip way back here in the 27th starting position. Now he's won this race twice, transferred over into the Winston Select uh, three times, Mikey. You got a brand new piece of sheet metal on this car in the front and the nose, or the front and the tail of this car. How good is it, and can you get to the front? <laughs> well, I guess I can't say it's great or anything. Starting 27th, uh, Buffy told me I got to pass one car ever two and a half laps, or two and a half cars ever one lap. I can't remember exactly what she said. I fixed and call her and get that straight. But uh, watch enough sprint car racing on TNN to know that uh, when you're starting 27th in the B main, you're having a bad day. But uh, we've got the car, the Pennzoil Pontiac now is working really good. I mean, it's handling good, so uh, I could make it exciting. Just briefly explain to the fans that you do have some new sheet metal on the front and the rear. Explain to it what it is. Well, what we've done is extended the Pontiac three inches in the back, an inch and three quarters in the front, to bring it in line with the Ford and the Chevy. No longer than the Ford and the Chevy. In fact, it's still the shortest car in the garage. But what it's done is it enabled us to have a little bit more downforce in the back, a little bit more downforce in the front, Hopefully when you run 20, 30 laps on your tires, it'll make the car work a little bit better in the corners and uh, enjoy a little bit more success for this Pinsall racing team. This will be the very first test for the new sheet metal on the Pontiac uh, in the Winston Open Select. Glenn Jarrett? Well, I've made my, made my way back to the 12th row now. If there were ever a race that were designed for a specific individual, this is it. We're talking to Jimmy Spencer here, Mr. Excitement. 
Hey, an aggressive race, an aggressive race driver. Can you get this thing to the front? First of all, you got to realize, I thought they were going to invert this field. And, uh, but anyway. <laughs> I just realized I don't even have the. It's 50 laps. you got to be handling to, to be a factor in this race. you got to be in the top six. Correct. Who's your top I have Bush right written now? on there. McDonald's this is Cup, by the way. This is the Winston the Select. Jimmy Spencer, if he can... I never even changed that crap. I'm such a loser. We'll be back right when it comes to this. doing this internet shit. The inaugural NASCAR All-Star Race was run in one segment with a mandatory pit stop. Following his stop, Darrell Waltrip, Junior Johnson's number 11, ran down and passed Harry Gant to win the race. And then, some say mysteriously, have his engine explode 100 feet past the finish line. They have fired the engines for the Winston Open. 36 cars, six will transfer into tonight's main event. There's the field. Here is your starting lineup, brought to you by Sears Die Hard. On the pole, Joe Nemechek, a record 181 and a half, breaking Alan Kowicki's mark from 1992. Ward Burton, first front row start for the freshman from Virginia. And right behind him, brother Jeff, ran fourth at Atlanta in March. Rounding out the front four, Greg Sack. Fixing the title. Race two years ago. The fifth starter will be Brett Bodine, who finished second in the 1989 Open. And six. Remember last year's sensational run for rookie Jeff Gordon led this race. Save that sucker. Seven. Watch Rick Mast, who has two top five finishes in this race. Loy Allen, pole winner at Daytona. Todd Bodine makes his first start in the Open, and Harry Gant. I didn't share it out yet, <laughs> anyway. That's one Wally thing. Alabama it's good. Fourth last week at Sears Point. Oh, it's right. Sophomore from Texas, Bobby Labonte. And Rich Bickle. First start since Darlington. Chuck Bound and Billy Standridge in row number eight. Ken Schrader way back in row nine. Finished second in this race last year. Yeah, and it's close enough, right? Series. John Andretti with a busy week between... Hello, how you doing, Pops? Champ Steve Grissom. Hey, how you doing? Trickle. Morning. Strickland, who finished second in the Open in 92. And you heard from Jimmy Spencer, who hopes to work his way into the Winston Select. And Jimmy Hensley makes the second start in this race. Derek I was reviewing this race this morning, and it looked interesting. Lots of my favorites. And for people that weren't alive then... Dave Marcus with a new sponsor. They might know Kenny what Bouchard, a rookie of the year. Kenny Bouchard Kenny there. From New York State and Mike Wallace, double duty. He'll race Nazareth PA tomorrow. My dad will work with him in the spring and through the winter. And Jerry Hill from Maryland. Norm Benning makes his first start in 94. And Jeremy Mayfield he crashed the qualifying schedule for the final spot in the field. It's going pretty good. Three pace laps. Hold on a minute. I gotta get where I can read. My monitor is so far across the room. I can't. I can't see. I gotta bring up my trick. More importantly, he moves into the big show. Tonight in Charlotte, it is presently 70. I've been rearranging everything, so it looks a little different. I know when I streamed last time, I had a stool. I, I had nothing to lean on, so now I'm a little better. Motor Speedway. I had swinged it around. Five miles an hour behind the pace car. It's a quad oval with not one, but two dog legs in the front straightaway. The turns are back 24 degrees, five on the straightaways. <laughs> on this one and a half mile super. This still says Charlotte Bush 94 on stuff, but. That's called Humpy Bumpy up there. That's where everybody you poop scoop the backyard. So, man, you have to be careful. There. Oh. In there and you can get in a lot of trouble. Name for H.A. Humpy Wheeler, president of the racetrack. Yeah, that'll hurt you. Hi, hi Heltrick. How you doing? Yeah, that'll kill you. <laughs> I use a rake. Stella is a big old hound dog, so I can't really... I could scoop, but... Years ago, and since then... I just have... They have expanded this place very small area anyway and I just rake it up and put it into the woods. <laughs> Chevy's and Pontiacs and one Oldsmobile in the field for this. Oh you're back yeah I got a brace on my knee right now. <laughs> I've had sciatica but there are 14 since I was a child today in this field like ninth grade 10 in the front four okay the front row and the second row all on Hoosier tires. 
Thanks, Randy. As I get down that back straightaway, still a good bit of sunlight here, but a million watts of light coming up tonight. And right there is where that sun really gets in the driver's eyes as they get up into turns three and quickly go in the shade. There's a look at the stats for this race. And next time by. Yeah, I've used the squeeze claw one at my there. sister's. On the point, Joni Machek. It works really good to clean out her pool filter. <laughs> you know the basket? I use it to reach down in there. All that nasty. Mike, you touched on something that's real important. When they turn in, they go in the... Yeah, the 41. Dad worked with them a little bit in the beginning of the year, but at this point in time, Dad was working on Joe's bush team. That's a very dangerous part, but it'll get better as it gets darker. Now, if you can imagine that in your daily commute, whether you head home toward the sun in the west or head toward the east in the morning at 55 or 65 miles an hour. Imagine doing I was looking at it. I know, I'm, I'm like just ponytailing it today. They've been working on our water. The way it looks coming out of the faucet, I don't want to stand in it. So I don't even want to wash my hair in it. So I don't, I got to let it clean out. They did something up at the main place. I live in an RV park. Yeah, Nemechek is in the 41 Meineke car this year. It's with, um, I want to say, uh, Larry Hedrick owns it. Yeah. My dad worked a little bit with him on the 41, and there were just a lot of crew chiefs all involved. So my dad stepped back to the Bush garage again with uh, Joe's regular team because he, that's the main thing he likes is helping new drivers. Camaro pace car pulling in. And they address themselves to the start. Joe Nemechek. Is it hard to hear me still? Lots of fireworks tonight. Green flag. All right. Let me get my OBS. I noticed on my other videos my voice is too quiet. It's a quick jump. He moves up to the high. I'll put it my microphone all the way up. What's working low? I gotta make sure it didn't change default. Wait a minute. Properties. It's on the right mic. Okay, I'm gonna turn it up though. Wow. How about now? Whoa, shit. <laughs> I put you right up into the red. First six single file bump position. Okay. That's where. My last video was. Re it's something to do with the gain, and Michael Hall helped me with the gain and all, so it cuts out what they're talking on. After that. The, here comes Greg Sachs. The um, display capture, the screen capture. Wasted no time. He was the fastest driver in three race practice. Rick Mast up high. He's going to take that spot. But I turned, I turned it up till I'm getting into red now. Oh, somebody brushed Something. the wall. Dad started working with Joe in 1991. He met him. He was helping Birdie. Steve Bird is like from our hometown. And, of course, he's won, like, four championships in Bush. But when Birdie first started out, he was at Volusia when Volusia was still paved. And he had a problem with um, qualifying. They qualified, like, 16th. So my dad was in Florida, went over and helped them guys a little, and they ended up winning the race. It was Kenny Wallace's first race he won. But the car park next to them was Joe in his rookie, not rookie, but just starting out in Bush. Transfer. And uh, at the final transfer spot right now. So after, after I, I guess Dennis Boyd maybe. Kenny Schrader. The engine builder or I gotta check with Dad on the facts, but somebody wanted said that Joe wanted Dad's number. And uh, he worked for Joe two weeks later. He used to travel from Florida to the races, get paid mileage or whatever to drive to the race. And he helped him out and was hired full time in 92. They won the points. And then in 93, they were Dentine, were fifth in points with no wins. Whole bunch of seconds. And then he. Uh, There's a. Uh, 
Brick O'Dyne underneath Ward Burton. 94, Joe moved up to Cup with Larry Hedrick. My dad wouldn't win them for a little while, but oh, man. the expression, too many chiefs, not enough Indians, um, came to mind from that situation. And he went and worked in Joe's shop, a limited schedule, nine races in the Bush series. Side by side, once again. Sixes and the V6s were exploding like Jeff, don't call everywhere. <laughs> in number 24, the DuPont Chevy, Ray Evernham, the former modified racer. His crew chief and mentor, Rick Hendrick, owns that car. Now, my dad worked with Greg when he was with Dingman Brothers, Pontiac. That's left two forces on the racetrack right there. Greg Sachs is as brave as anybody alive, and Jeff Gordon is also, so this will be a fight here. <coughs> Excuse me. He takes the lead. Where I normally have my... I used to sit about five feet closer on my bed, but... Pretty impressive. They didn't take him a whole... I like... Get by. I thought they'd run side by side for <sighs> I like this little corner better. <laughs> Got up out of the groove and crashed. Here's Kenny Schrader in Kodiak Colors. For those that do it, no, I live in Florida, near Daytona, but housing-wise for someone like me over 55 doesn't allow my son, which is in his 40s. So I also have a big dog, an 80-pound puppy dog, and a cat. So all those things disqualify me from most places, renting or anything. So I decided we'd get an RV. Our family helped us get an RV, and we live in an RV park that's beautiful. And it's in Flagler Beach. And it's uh, convenient. Convenient for our scenario. Our situation. And Matt closing in. Let's set it for you. Nemechek is the leader. Gordon is second. Sachs is third. Jeff Burton is So it's like we're on vacation all year. We have an annual rental spot near Daytona. North of Daytona. And the STP forty three and Harry Gant. Two make it qualify I also stay at my sister's you gotta stay somewhere else about one week they are closing it up every six months or something I don't know like that but I house sit for my sister so that's my main address and then the RV park so that's how the logistics on that stuff works but the rent here is about 500 less than anywhere else but the electric is included so it's like really plus plus number 22 other than maintenance on my rv or uh, keeping my lot clean that's about all i have to worry about they mow they do everything i've got a pool i can go to i got miles of walking trails we're in a tomoka river area which is gorgeous lots of fishing canoeing in fact the canals here in our park would lead right to the ocean if we were canoeing let's go to randy pemberton yeah not yet Randy? Yeah, possibly. Oh, the toy parlor is awesome. I love them. I see people here. They'll put the tailgate down and just use it as their patio. It's just cool as heck. So he's got a long way to go if he lost the cylinder. Dropping a spot behind Michael Waltrip is Labadi at Maxwell House Ford. Here's Steve Grissom, the Diamond Ridge number 29. A traveling storefront. That is the coolest idea. Completed 13 laps. Joe Nemechek is walking away. There he is. We have my son's, this is what we did. And Larry Hedrick. He's Jeff Gordon is flying. Greg Sachs is third. Jeff Burton is fourth. Fifth is Brent Bodine. My son has his uh, sim rig where they used, you know how they have the dinette with the table that goes down and makes a bed? Well, we ripped all that out. <laughs> we put his sim rig in there because it's on the big slide out. Coming out of the corner. And uh, we moved the dinette to the back to make just one big long bench. <laughs> We're still we're still working on that project. It's not secured in yet or anything. We we got 
actually we got a really good deal on this RV. It's one of the top models from 2007. And it's 30 feet long, which doesn't qualify for a state park. You've got to be 28 or less or 29 or less for a state park. That's something to think about when you buy one. Is if you're under 29 feet, you get that additional use the um, you can go in a state park. They have a size limit, at least around here. And then uh, it had been, something fell on the back corner, like a tree or something prior to us owning it. And they Mickey Mouse the, fi the fix of it, so it had leaked in the back. So we've got to replace the whole back wall, the tailgate wall, which is easy. It's got a window. We just got to pull it all down. And put new plywood and insulation in. It's just in the the very tailgate. Yeah, we're watching. So the rest of it's pretty pretty sound. Got a really good qualifying tire and transit for the year. Looks like a Schrader Gordon. And the layout is just great. It's got two slide outs, so it's like the size of a single wide trailer almost. It doesn't feel cramped at all. Very high ceilings. High ceilings help. It's a fifth wheel. We don't have anything to pull a fifth wheel. Oh boy, they're going by those but four cars there like they're meeting. Them. If we need to move it, we'll just hire somebody to tow it somewhere else. Rather than pay like fifty thousand dollars for a racetrack and find the groove that his car for a, a truck. <laughs> For a 3500 truck, if we could find an old 3500 Ford, my son could definitely work on it. He, he's real Ford savvy, I guess. Harry Gant. Yeah, that would be a position if he gets up under him. That car is sticking right He re used to drag race Mustangs and work on things. Well, guys, one car that won't stick on the white line, at least not for very long, is Ward Burton. He started on the outside pole, but he has developed a push in the car. car on yeah. The yeah, ours is the Forest River, so brand-wise, it's kind of meh. <laughs> it's mid mid-grade compared to do well, they have others, I guess, They'd like a Fleetwood or something. It's kind of a more chintzier model. Has gone to the garage. They've used right good window on materials it. like oak and stuff and did a little extra with the little little ass decorations and, and all of that. But Remember the first six cars wall-wise and stuff, it could stand a little more insulation. It's Tuscan. My Which is so outdated, but I don't care. If I'm going to redo it, I'll do it in checkered flag material. <laughs> I'll do a racing motif in here when I redo it. This will be a big break for the drivers from 7th on back to catch up to the field. Yeah, there might even be a little tire strategy here to put on fresh The only thing that's kind of crippled us as far as doing a lot of maintenance. You come in and get fresh tires and maybe have an advantage. It, Mike Wallace is one of the weekend's double duty drivers. The park I'm in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, to was one price when I moved in and three years later it's $300 more. So my raise certainly didn't go up that much. <laughs> so it's cramped our style. If I had free cash, what I would probably probably do is go to more New Smyrna races or Volusia. Tonight's exclusive I like going to that stuff. On TNN is brought to you by Napa. You made affiliate. I need if I don't follow you I I will right now. Thought I did. If I didn't I I meant to. Left over from the crowd scenes in Major League 2. <laughs> yeah, I followed you. The wild thing. Well, we have wild. I thought here. so. No, it's Kari's drive. Oh, we got several of them. I'm so glad you made affiliate. I know you're on an ad. I'm sorry. I hope that's my dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I hope, it, hope it's not your truck. The new leader is Dave Marcus. How about that? Here's when. Well, guys, to update you on what happened down here in the pits when they made those stops, uh, Joe Nemechek, the leader, took on four tires, no weight adjustment. As the same thing for Jeff Burton and 
Uh, the 77 car. Also, <laughs> Thank you for the follow. So they can make a weight adjustment. Or I, told you the car was I can't tell. Wait a minute. What are we doing? Out of the car. So the oh, <laughs> my sound alerts. I forgot I turned my. Uh, he was behind when he came in. So my uh, alerts on. <laughs> <laughs> I say Dave Marcus leading. That's a good story for two reasons. First of all, he has a new sponsor, the Olive Garden Chain of Restaurants. Will back Marcus for the whole rest of the night. Oh my gosh! Thank you, Hill Trick. That's what it was. It was a sub. Thank you. Everybody else pitched. You guys are awesome. Up in the lead and during the point races, which this is not one of, gets those five bonus points for leading a lap. Yeah, but I'm. He gifted it to Pops, so you don't get the ads. Deserves a good sponsor. He does because there's nobody that works as hard as Dave Marcus does to stay in. You guys are so wonderful. Job. I might have to get you. I love our morning crew. Vader ain't been on lately. I don't know what he's doing. Okay. I didn't hear. You know, I know I lurk him, but I'm sometimes sleeping. <laughs> we'll be right back to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Nearly full moon over Charlotte. My sister passed me some T-shirts. I think my son will like this one. An event that's like Best Pro Shops. Flag to restart this race with 28 laps. Hold it still. It is Dave Marcus on the point. So it can see it. Bouchard did not pit. Yeah. Best Pro Shops. On the inside, a second, and here comes. Kenny Bouchard is a long story from my history and my past. Kenny and Ronnie. They were the first drivers. My dad. Help that I was old enough to remember all of it, you know, like, I know I remember going to tracks as a baby and as a toddler. I've got this really weird memory that I remember things as a really infant baby, and it's kind of freaking me out sometimes. But. Oh, this is not good. Joe got by. On his roof, Chuck Bound. Bound was up on his roof there for a second. I wish this was clearer. I'm sorry. It just is not. Michael Waltrip up in the wall on the outside. The technology to stream at night for them was kind of iffy. Rich Bickle. They will race back to the line and take the caution flag. Jeff Gordon's in the lead. Kenny in second right now. There is a long-held theory in stock car racing. Todd Bodine climbs out of his battered... I gotta check what else is on Flow Racing. I think Sat Stafford is. Strangest things happen on the racetrack. John Andretti, Kenny Bouchard. You see Todd Bodine walking, talking to... That's 67 at Kenny. There's Rich That's gotta be the team my father went to. It was a 67. I've got one little scrappy picture of it that I, when I do 95 next week, we'll be able to see it. I might actually clip it because that's the only video. I mean, I looked up Kenny's name and looked for all these pictures that my dad helped him with, and I couldn't find this particular one. Turning Butch Box, $80,000 race car. 80000 they used to cost when they used to build them themselves. And now they have a cost savings. Just for a second. Now, Michael hit really hard. You I got some swamp land somewhere to sell that person. Him pretty soon. Going to catch his breath. That has to take a lot out of you. Look oh, at Harry Gant. Oh, no. I can't believe it. Trying to drive it in. Won't do him much good. You nope. see the rear end housing turned towards the inside and out. the wheel on the right front there is turned dead right. And they're going to red flag this race. Rich Bickle, Chuck Bound. Now watch Dave Marcus, the green. This is unreal. He got touched right there by uh Ward Burton. Like Ward Burton just a little bit. And he Don't, almost saves it. And um, that looked like Brett Bodine might have touched him. And around he goes. Kept trying to stay straight. Well, you can see the racetrack. Oh, there. shot up, though. Boy, Chuck was lucky there. He's on top of Bodine's car yeah. there just for a second, and then he gets on another car there. It's hard to see. Crazy. 
show you this again from a high angle above the press box. You now it's happening up there. front, top yeah, of the screen. Barely touches him right there. Cup cars nowadays, those throwaway bicks, I call them, that you can't even use an ARCA anymore. Coming up, look at the green car, Brett Bodine. In my humble opinion, was get into Marcus? No, I don't think the worst thing they ever could now, have done. Do you know how much they charge them for every one of them? What's the black car at the bottom of your screen? Race ready cars. Gets into him. million. Somebody said, I don't know how much, but way, way, way more than 80,000. There's Bodine, and he just becomes a launch ramp for Chuck Bound. What a wild ride, and Bound climbs out unscathed. Now, I think this is a raw satellite feed, so I can skip ahead a little. I don't need much comment. I chose it because... It's chaos. Uh, they have the red flag out now, and they're attending to Michael. I think his bells run pretty hard, but... Let me see. Get the... He's going. He has a really good chance of getting there. This is one of the fastest... Let's uh, watch right Jeff's interview. Drive it in. Nope. Don't do him much good. We're running the red flag here in the Winston Open. As best we can determine, every driver climbed from his car unaided. Mike Waltrip, as you saw, had a seat on the pavement and then was helped onto a stretcher with a precautionary neck brace and is being taken to the infield care center. There's the accident scene down in front of turn one, and Michael's car took a hard shot up into the wall that we'll show you in a moment. Let's go down with Randy Pemberton and a fellow who's quite concerned about Mike Waltrip right now. Well, he certainly is. This is Michael's brother, Daryl. We were just standing here with Jeff and Daryl. Jeff Bodine, of course, his brother's uh, both in that wreck. Uh, Daryl, uh, how did you see it? I know he can't be happy when you see something like that as a driver and a brother. No, first of all, uh, Michael took a little bit more than just a, a, a tough ride. I mean, uh, he hit that wall real hard. He, if you look at the footage, he hit a car head on and it shot him straight up in the wall so I'm, I'm real worried about him and it took him awful long time to get to him and then they get to him with a fire extinguisher so I don't know what they thought that was going to do for him but nevertheless that's what happens on restarts uh, Dave and a couple of them stayed out didn't get tires everybody gets new tires you got to shoot out with 20 laps to go 25 and uh, you can't be patient I mean that's the thing about this race that it's the love hate issue of this race you love to run it you love to be in it the hate issue is you got to do things that you wouldn't normally do and uh, it looked like the 31 car was fast down on the inside trying to get by Marcus touched him and from there on I mean the rest of it's all on film well let's take a look at it one more time if we can roll the replay there well uh, Daryl is back here with Jeff on Ein's truck watching the monitor Daryl this is after the pit stop as you said uh, Dave Marcus did not take on tires and there's the, there's the wreck starting on the left yeah and uh, of course Dave turns gets into the 26 car from there on, everybody's reacting to what they see in front of them. And if you watch Michael, he hits the uh, 71 car, bam, goes up in the air, and he takes a whale of a wreck. He goes into the wall hard. The 12 car's upside down. He comes back down. But I'm more worried about Michael. That was a that was probably, of all the cars in that wreck, the hardest impact of any of them. And he, he looked like he was hurt to me. Okay, Darryl. Darryl wants to go check on his brother. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. The glancing blows into the wall and into the other cars, buddy, those aren't the ones you worry about so much. The car wasn't the main issue there. The yep. wall was. The angle they hit, hit on the wall there was, was severe, and uh, you can tell by the damage to the front end of that race car. But, uh, you know, the main thing is I, I really think he's going to be all right. We're real concerned, but I'm sure he'll be okay. And we'll get an update as soon as we can. One fellow who's done quite well in this race thus far as you watch Dave Marcus's car go off on the hook. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Well, you can see the work being done on the front of Jeff Gordon's car. Remember, we showed you that he had caved the front end in. Ray Evernham and crew are taking this opportunity to repair that car. Now, under Winston Open rules, you can work on the car under red flag. Control. Yeah, I agree with that. Repairing that aerodynamic damage now. Jeff Gordon. Safety is so road. important. Man, this thing is really running. Well, it was running until I hit that piece on the back straight. Making cars slower by making them have no aero or when I hit it, uh, things like I mean, that is just pushing really bad. So uh, fortunately, we we got that last stop. If your tires aren't touching the ground, it's you know, called an airplane. And we don't like to see that. Uh, you know, it's working uh, well for us. We get to fix this front end, hopefully, and, and maybe the car be as good as it was at the start. Well, you had the thing. You put it out front then on that restart. Uh, you think you can get back there? Well, you know, I, I tell you that the car is working real well. You know, these guys have done a good job and working hard all day to get to run this good. But uh, it starts out real good. Let's see what it does after about 15 or 20 laps. I see a little more patience in Jeff Gordon this year. 
Well, I feel like I'm driving as good or better than I've ever driven before. We're just not getting the brakes. So uh, maybe this is one of the brakes that we needed tonight and get us into that Winston. Well, I think at the rate he's going, he has a really good chance of getting there. This is one of the fastest cars out there right now, guys. I like the paints because it was the first night race. They were experimenting with stuff. Supervising the aerodynamic repair. Jeff Gordon is a much, not just much more experienced, but he seems like a much sharper, smarter, picking his chances driver than he was a year ago. He is absolutely in that. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get back from break. It's kind of weird how they... It's all-star night after this. Highway transportation for TNN provided by Cedar Ridge RV Center, Branchville, New Jersey. That'd be the day, right? Have the motor built in. Eight eight four eight eight four. In the first two. That's, that's, <laughs> both of them are Hendrix cars. Are we back to racing? Strategy? Get, get lost. <laughs> yeah. Hook Check up and out. go. Get Check away out. from all harm there. Pace car is in. 17 laps to go. First six cars qualify for tonight's main event. What a jump Jeff Gordon got. Cole Sitter sets the pace. He's running like he stole it. Or anybody else, he took off. Ray Sachs back, locked on at the back of Kenny Schrader for second place. For third, the Burton brothers go at it. You know, that's like, that's like when Bobby and Donnie used to race. They raced each other harder than anybody else. The Allison brothers, you bet sibling rivalry. Joe Nemechek on the bubble. Here comes Rick Mast up high. Boy, Greg Sachs is on the move here. He's right up the side straighter. They're coming down into the dog leg there on the front straightaway. That should be a position because... It Greg Sachs did some stunt driving, I believe, in some of the racing movies. Four of them are lined up single file on the bottom. I want to say the Days of Thunder. You know, they said they run better at night. Maybe. Uh, now we're in darkness and, and uh, track conditions are favorable for the Hoosier if they're going to have them favorable for the time. Six, the black and yellow, number 41. Of I think uh, Ricky Rudd did some... Rick Mass trying to move up and take that spot. Maybe even Benny. I'm not sure. Picked up a spot or two. There's that second pack. Why does that not surprise me? Yeah. I guarantee you one thing. Pack car is capable of getting in the top six. He'll put it there tonight. There's Spencer. The red and yellow, number 27 of Junior Johnson. He is 11. Ted Musgrave on the bottom. Oh, yeah, he drove for Junior in the following year. My dad will run with him a little in 95. Now goes after Bush champion Steve Grissom. Man, I swear Dad was helping on that Grissom car. It looks so familiar. Steve Grissom, I think he made the transfer from the Bush Grand National into Winston Cup about as well as him. I apologize. I know it's a really crappy video. The car worked well. Grissom, the Diamond Ridge Racing, number 29, and Gary Bechtel. Be the rookie of the but it was a good story. Never moved up and become Winston Cup rookie of the year since the 60s. Pretty good storylines in this one. They look like diamonds. That's the truth. When you said a diamond affair here, that's what they look like under the lights here. Jeff Gordon has checked out. <laughs> he has paid the bill. He's gotten all of his frequent hotel points. There he is on the left side of your screen. He's going to catch the plane. Yeah, if Hoosier's got an advantage, they better use it now because Jeff Gordon's the type of race car driver. He does not slack off, and he's looking for that rainbow. I know he wants in the run. I call that a 1.2-second lead, but it might as well be an hour and two minutes. Now, Mike Game was smart enough to fix that front end during that red flag there, and that made a big difference. And we'll see where that car is running right now. He's one inch off the white line all the way through that corner. Now, here comes the battle for second behind Gordon. Greg Sachs has it. Kenny Schrader in green and white wants it. Right behind Schrader, Jeff Burton, Ward Burton, Joe Nemechek. Hmm. Looks to me like Jeff Burton might be catching Schrader just a little bit now. Hmm. Ending up in the top six, and then they don't care whether it's brother or not. That, that, that ends when the green flag drops, believe me. They are fourth and fifth on the right side of your screen. Jeff Burton driving for Bill and Mickey Stavola, the Ray Best was for Dale Earnhardt looking on, three-time winner. The Winston yes, I did see that. You made affiliate. That is wicked awesome. That's what my GGs were for. <laughs> that is so cool. 
I remember when I did, it was like the third, fourth. Maybe November. It was very exciting. Let's check back with Randy Pemberton. I don't even know how to look up stats and stuff to know who watches and stuff. I don't even know who's watching now if they're lurking. I just figure if you want to be here, be here. I don't know much about it. I just like talking about racing. Get him some x-rays Nine to go. I think they go clean the rest of the way, I hope. He seemed to be okay, but he had a little difficulty breathing. I want to bring him in and check him out as well. Thanks, Randy. There are no easy crashes at 175 miles an hour. Second and third place. Let's go back to the fight for seventh. Hutt Strickland, Wally Dollenbach, and Rick Mass. I think all these cars are really happy to be in the race period right now. They had to go through that wreck just a little while ago. And as you see, there's no real damage to these cars. They were very lucky to miss, except you notice the back panel on the 43 car is missing there. He must have got into somebody just a little bit on the rear there. One of the cars did flip him. Now, 41, just going out of the picture there, that's Joe Nemechek. He's in sixth place. Hut Strickland in 23, the Smoking Joe's car. Fifth, fifth, third, second, and twelfth in previous opens. Now there's Nemechek, and they're catching him. I believe, yeah. Looks like uh, Dallenbach's pulling right down on Nemechek right now. You know, uh, Nemechek did everything was going so well for him, but it looked like uh, to me that the 43 car is moving right up on him here. That car driven to seven wins to cup titles. Those paint by Richard Petty. Wally Dallenbach drives it now. Yeah, they got their first top five last weekend on a road course, but they're running really well on the oval. That's got to make them feel better, too, not that they can just run on the road course. Well, Dollaback, former Trans Am champion, was very at home at Sears Point. Here's Glenn. Well, guys, uh, about Wally Dollaback, he's doing a heck of a job with the rear end knocked off of that car. That happened in the big wreck a while ago. He got slowed down to miss it, but another car ran into the back of him. He didn't get spun around. He got spun out of shape, but he kept control of the car. I think he's doing a wonderful job driving that car to be battling for one of those six transfer spots with the whole rear end knocked off of it. Evidently, last week's finish gave him a lot of confidence. Every time I see a car with the back end off like that, Bobby Allison, I had him lapped in Talladega, and the rear bumper come off. He made up the lap and beat me by six inches back in Talladega there one time. So really and truly, it may not be hurting him that much. It's just ugly. Now, a lot of late model cars on short tracks, buddy, they take that whole rear panel off so the air can get out from under there. Would that, would that help you at all the way that is? That didn't look so hot off that corner just uh -oh. then, but he's driving his heart out right now, and it looks to me like the car is hooked up really good. It's staying right on the bottom of the racetrack. And you know, Successful car and modified driver came out of New Jersey. Wally Jr. running down Joe Nemechek. Hey, you notice that Wally's getting under him there with the pins up. He got in there. Irvin and his car owner Robert Gates in the upper right of your screen. Your wife Kim watching. Everybody's watching this race because Jeff Gordon kind of just checked out. So we're going to keep our own and see what happens. Yeah, Jeff has really stunk up the show. Sixth place is the race. Nima check the Monarchy car has it. The FTB Pontiac wants it. What do you think? I need my glasses to type. I'm so blind. Oh, boy. You want to make the Winston, you better stand on her now. Yeah. Okay. I don't blame you. I got a coffee right Chip. somewhere. <laughs> His cousin, long-time crew chief, Dalen. It's half cold over there. For Dollar back. Probably need to drink it. Elmer to eat him an apple for to Jimmy Bean. You know, while I got... Take my morning meds like old people do. Go and drop back just a little bit now. With two laps to go, he's really got to get after it. Let's show you Jeff Gordon briefly, because he'll get the white flag this time around. We have a fight for second place. As you see him going in the corner here, they'll come in the frame right here. That's Kenny <laughs> and Greg Sachs side by side going in the first corner there. That's for bragging rights and a bit of money, but sixth place is the one to count. There's second on the outside, Schrader. Sachs in third. There. I'll take my old people meds in a little bit. <laughs> it's the final lap. I saw that pop up. Winston, if I can just hold her straight here, but I, he's not the type of driver. That... Good old Gordon. Look at that pretty car under the lights. I remember they made such a big deal of that. I wish this was a clearer. Jeff Burton, Ward Burton, there they go. Fourth place, and Joe Nemechek will take the final spot.
Yep. I believe that after this, it's going to go into the Winston all in one shot there. All in one corner there. You probably got the right rear broadcast. They had special paint and stuff, a lot of fluorescence. He wrecked out of it. There's Joe. Can we do it now? Pretty car. Do it now. Yay for Jeff. <laughs> one thing I learned he had a good strong doing my Hendrick cars, finishing first and third. Doing my uh, research for dad the book I'm writing on dad. And he'll go on to the win. I was brought up to think that dad was the only smart crew chief in We asked Jeff Gordon this morning in the whole place. <laughs> Cause he was like my superhero, like because he, I mean, God, I, you know, I think you can you can put words into that. You know, it's it's an unbelievable opportunity and, and be a chance of a lifetime. But I realize there's many smart crew chiefs in racing. Here are the six drivers that will transfer to tonight's main event, the Winston Select, along with the All Stars already qualified. My biggest superhero in the whole wide world is gonna like blow your mind. But it'll be a is Smokey Eunuch. So. When I met his daughter, I was so tongue-tied, I couldn't even say anything but just thank you. Thank you for everything you did. And I know, you know, being a daughter, she had sacrifices, too, because of racing, because I was a daughter of the crew chief. Well, not exactly. I mean, we're just trying to learn for that Winston. You know, I'm just awful excited to be in it, first time ever, and uh, it's, a, it's a big thrill, you know. I, I mean, there's not too many guys that can say that they've been in that race, so I'm awful excited. Even though we had to come through the open, uh, I didn't I was out there all by myself this time and, and didn't put in the fence. So I learned last year, I guess. But these guys, this DuPont crew, did a heck of a job. The guys a good pit stop, guys up to the front, and uh, they fixed it there on that red. You know, so that got us back in the race. You're awfully strong. You think you got the car that can take the Winston Select? Well, I think the good thing is we've we've got 50 laps out here now. We know what to do to the car. Hopefully that'll uh, pay off in that in that Winston. Uh, you know, we're we're going to be able to tune it up a little bit. And uh, I think we got an awful strong car. We'll just have to see. I don't know how strong those guys are. Well, I think he's pretty strong, too. Let's let him cool off a little bit. Get ready for that Winston Select. Randy? Joe Nemechek just squeaked in. I'll tell you, this is a competitive person. Sixth place, not nearly good enough. He's talking to his crew chief, Doug Richard, just a second ago, trying to get the car fixed. What do you got to do? Well, we're going. our car was a little bit tight there. Something happened when Dave Marcus hit me in the side there in the car. It just lost that uh, that that rocket jet feeling that you get. And uh, we're going to try sticking a rubber in the right rear. Uh, try to loosen the car up a little bit from the middle off. It seemed to be where we were tight and see what that does. And nonetheless, I guess fortunate to get in. Well, it, it was, you know, after after he hit me and they had that big crash when I was going around the racetrack, I, I told the guy, the crew, that there was something wrong. And uh, we checked it all over. Everything looks good. So we'll stick a rubber in and see if we can't make do. But, uh, you know, this is a great night for Monarchy, Chevrolet, and uh, myself, Joe Nemechek. And, uh, hey, we're doing it to them. Okay, good luck in the Winston Slug. Now they're going to put a spring rubber in it, buddy, which will do what? <laughs> it depends on which end. Right. Put it in the uh, right rear to loosen the car up a little bit, uh, and I'm sure that's what they're planning on doing because he said he did have a push near the end of the race there. So they'll put a half rubber or a full rubber in the right rear, which makes the spring a little stiffer, and it'll make the back end stand up, and it'll also turn it loose a little bit. Well, it was a wild one in the Winston Open. Five of the top 15 qualifiers were taken out in the crash, and four of the six drivers I, make the trip. It depends on where loose. If he's loose going in, I'd put it in the front of the car. Well, if there's one guy that I would have bet money on with a transfer. If it's loose coming out, I put it in the rear. A lot of laps at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Just my thoughts. The car's really working well. Because what's happening is the left rear is driving too good. Spun rear tires, let Jeff get away. Centrifugal force will make you. Last lap too conservative. I don't know if we've finished second or third yet, but we got 70 more laps. Well, how about it, guys? Where did he finish? I was in the pits. So I couldn't see either. Uh, we, Centrifugal force makes the weight go to the right automatically. Automatically to the right front. <laughs> and automatically to the right rear coming out. It's just the way it is. So you got to try to put it on the left, which is the trick. And he has finished, but not too much. In the last five years, three second place finishes. About time he won this thing. Well, Kenny Schrader's the most active race car. The whole thing about racing is you have four tires touching the ground, and you want to put the weight where it needs to be most when. And a lot of that quick transfer can be done with shocks and different custom build of compression and rebound. Some of what's happened, and some. That's kind of where my dad excelled. 1987. He still builds shocks.
He builds for IMSA. He's got three cars got a shop, so now I know well. Hey, welcome. Let me see what's happening. Oh, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Oh shoot! Fly guy! Damn! You're riding with eight people? Hello, welcome, man. <laughs> I'm an old racing historian. Fly, I love you. He's one of my kids. He's one of my eye racing kids. If they did make contact. Thank you. What I'm doing is reviewing the um they came together. Winston three and four. Selected Winston from '94 because the collision Nemechek spoke of. It was after Joe left Dad, but he started getting his name front row Joe there. The blue and orange. Um, Dad was still working on his Bush team. There's a bit of collision. Between but this was what happened in the in the Winston Open, which is the qualifying race for the Winston Selects. Six people. and that's what Joe advance. And Joe is the sixth car, so he will advance. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And Michael Waltrip. I'm glad you're here. To the local hospital for This is what most of my streaming is. Is um. Let's go down to the pits. Here's Glenn. Well, old races, because I'm writing a book about my father. You can see the. Um, my name is Tanya or T or Miss T or Mama. <laughs> and um. Evidently, he and Marcus did. A lot of the you know, Mid-Atlantic guys always call me Mama. Kind of upset the car a little bit. The aerodynamics. I don't see how it did. My son's an eye racer. Wheel of the car. Just, my dad was a crew chief. I owned race cars in the 80s. With my ex-husband, he was the driver. We had a late model team in New England. And Larry, was there any damage? Dad worked in IMSA, Cup, Bush. Not that I'm aware of. Arca, mostly anything. Uh, um, he's helped a lot of different people. We started in the Modifieds. We grew up in the Modifieds in New England. And we were the original Modified Tour. That's Larry Hedrick. He owed, owned the 41. Contact like that, but the biggest thing was the time change. You know, when they had the time there to sit around and wait. And that's a 94 Z28, and I had a 95. It looked almost identical. That's a T-top, though. I had the... This is all part. I of had the convertible. Select all the Back when I were oh, that's right. Yeah, I worked in Cup for a couple of years for a couple of teams. For, I was mostly in timing and scoring. Oh, thank you, thank you. You gonna look? Here is the order of Oh, back. You back? Okay. See, I don't have my glasses on right now. You know what's up? You know how I type. Misses it by just one spot. Hut Strickland. Rick Mast on further back. Jimmy Spencer faded. We just got a raid from Fly Guy. And in fact, and I think back, I know how to do a shout out. I learned that. Let me see this. I got to put my glasses on though because I can't see. Daytona 500 winner Sterling Marlin about to take a ride around the speedway. Slow do, 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 do. Well, the crowd milling, talking over that uh, wild accident. In the I'm in the wrong spot. The one that took nine <laughs> Flip. Drivers, six of the top 15 qualifiers out of Escape. the Escape. go Lighting up in Iowa has put a million watts of light into this place. Wait a second. I'm sorry. Mike. I'm an idiot. Tell everybody, this is not over, folks. The best no. part is yet to come. And I guarantee you one thing. You now I can do it. Race for something to watch. You wait till you get everybody out there. There's one race that's prior to this. You're going to see one shootout that you will remember for a long time. Many of the sports top drivers by winning <coughs> recently are me. already in the Winston Select. If you want to race as a driver in 1993 or 4, you're in this field. If you want it as a car owner, your car's in this field with its present driver. Did it work? Look at a lot more of that 200 mile an hour tape. Yes! Originally I think. For forced air heating systems. Hell yeah. Thank you, Fly. For heating ducts, but... It's held race cars together at 200 plus. You see Sterling Marlin coming out there with his car right behind him. Crowds cheering and everything. This is a very proud moment for this boy. He they actually borrowed my 95 Camaro major race for the uh, Winston in 96. Right. He's always had to come through the Winston. It drove Miss Teen North Carolina around the track and the pre-race stuff. Fans, they are I really need to try to find a tape of that. Haven't really found it. And 
You know, Mike, a few seconds ago, we seen Jeff Gordon in there. Miss Teen North Carolina at the time was Wendy Venturini, the voice of uh, many broadcasts, MRN and all. So, yeah. Didn't race already, right? Kind of a cool little tidbit her dad, Bill, drove. will join us on some of the And how that happened is Lake Speed rented a shop from Bill Venturini. My ex drove the transporter and asked if they could borrow my car. <laughs> so it was like, I said, of course. tight in the beginning there. It's a good story from my life when I'm old. <laughs> and I knew we were home free from there. Right now, you know, with these 20 minutes between races. Really Dad worked with Greg a lot that we wouldn't get it done in, time. in the early eighties and it looked like you and Schrader were having a lot of I wanna show you. Oh man, it's pretty neat, you know. They go for coffee every Monday. I've got to go there sometime. I'm such an awful daughter. Let me see. I think I might can pull up that picture of them going to coffee. Well, he didn't know whether he finished second or third, but I bet you knew, didn't you? I knew, and I think he knew, too. <laughs> <laughs> Former track champion of the NASCAR Modifieds up at Stafford, Connecticut, Greg Sachs. Greg's going to have to work on that loud voice, isn't he? <laughs> Is he excited or what? <laughs> Dale Earnhardt. Ooh. Six time. Winston Cup champ. And you hear the mixed reaction for the crowd. They love that guy, I'm telling you. They all respond, and they all have a reaction when Dale Earnhardt comes out. Let me see. A pure excitement. Yeah, my bitch is in there. There's something going to happen. You can bet one way or the other. It was once said of Reggie Jackson, or perhaps by Reggie himself, that he was the straw that stirred the drink. <laughs> Perhaps this man is when it comes to Winston Cup racing. Oh, yeah. What would the Winston be without Dale Earnhardt in it? I can't imagine. I have so many racing photos. The late Davey Allison. It's crazy. Nobody else has been to victory lane more than once. Look at them people. You think they don't like him? The man, he, did, he was brought up 15 miles from here. He's the number one man it. in this part of the country. Grew up at the corner of Coach and Sedan Streets in nearby Kannapolis. Get out of here. His father, the late Ralph Earnhardt, NASCAR National Sportsman Champion, worked on... Dale worked on his early cars in the basement garage of his mom's house. Yeah, and they do have a Dale Earnhardt Boulevard over there, too. They're proud of this boy in Kannapolis. And they renamed the Highway Route 3. Mm, look at all them. After his passing, though, I think. Yes. Okay, this is the most recent picture I have of Greg Sachs. Well, we're getting down to it. But it was about two years ago. This is Greg Sachs right here. This is Steve Bird, uh, crew chief extraordinaire with like four BGN championships. And this is, oh, I, I took it off of here. It's, um, I got the uh, sticker up there, the 90 Hampshire. And so that's Herbie Simpson, and uh, he passed away last year. He was always there when he was in town. He lived both in New Hampshire and in Florida. But Steve Bird and, and Greg Sachs are both down here now. And they still all meet. But he sure paid the price for it. Sorry about that. I'll start that over if you want. Tonight's exclusive coverage of the Winston Select on TNN is brought to you by... And you hear the mixed reaction. Okay, we'll go back there. They either love him or hate him, but they all respond and they all have a reaction. When Dale Earnhardt comes out. A pure excitement what that is. When that man gets in a race car, there's something going to happen. You can bet one way or the other. It was once said of Reggie Jackson... Or well, perhaps by Reggie himself, but he was the straw that stirred the drink. Perhaps <laughs> this man is when it comes to Winston Cup racing. Oh, yeah. What would the Winston be without Dale Earnhardt in it? I can't imagine. Well, he's won this race three times. The late Davey Allison won it twice, and nobody else has been to victory lane more than once. Look at them people. You think they don't like him? The man, he, did, he was brought up 15 miles from here. He's the number one man in this part of the country. Grew up at the corner of Coach and Sedan Streets in nearby Kannapolis. Get out of here. His father, the late Ralph Earnhardt, NASCAR National Sportsman Champion, worked on... 
Dale worked on his early cars in the basement garage of his mom's house. Yeah, and they do have a Dale Earnhardt Boulevard over there, too. They're proud of this boy in Kannapolis. I see Pops. I'll be right back. Mm, look at all them black marks in the open there. Yes. Well, we're getting down to it as they form the cars up. Mark Martin's Valvoline Ford with Jack Roush being rolled into position. Of all the finishes in the Winston, perhaps one stands out as the most famous of all. Perhaps this. This is the, why I played this. 92, the first night under the lights and the fifth. Oh, okay. 92. The corner. He's got the inside. Oh, he's, he's up to oh, our bumper. Oh, 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 the, the, the racing service down on the uh -oh. left part of the racetrack. And, oh, oh, oh. and it's Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty coming to the checkered flag. Here comes Davey Allison to the bottom. It'll be the finish. Oh, wow, oh, wow reckon. Uh -oh. Y'all remember that? 92? Davey Allison is in a shower of sparks. He won the race, but he sure paid the price for it. Tonight's exclusive coverage of the Winston Select on TNN is brought to you by... Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep Hotel. Uh, Bristol, it, Watching from it was 93, I think. I went to a Bristol and a Darlington with my sister, and in New Hampshire several times, but... And Linda Davis. Before I One moved south. For hit duet, Does He Love You, with Reba McIntyre. She'll sing the national anthem. Reba's singing the national anthem. That's exciting. Holy crap, look how she she's so young. No, that's Linda Davis, I was gonna say. What so proudly we at the twilight That's a pretty good one. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night Oops. or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glass of bombs bursting in air gave They did a flyover at night. the glory days of racing, wasn't it now? The crowd. Now the words that over 100,000 folks here have been waiting for. Jesus, what a, what a cluster. was performed from the 335th Squadron, 4th Tactical Wing at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. And now, what you have waited for all night long, the President and CEO of Davenport Incorporated, Mr. Tommy Davenport. It's me. I want to get to the end of the year. We've got to say it again. The only way it could get more... Okay, the banquet. Down the back straight away and let them jump each other when they go by. <laughs> I mean, he nearly did that tonight. In the Atlanta. What a grand night of racing at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Track car racing's all-star night. Phoenix. Has been a wild one. And Jeff Bodine is the man with a $200,000 check. 
Tomorrow, TNN televises. Rocket M. World Pit Crew Championship. That looks like fun. Let's watch that. Nah. We'll be there to bring you all. Shoot, yeah. I'm going to watch it. Just to see what they did. $62 Sorry, I don't have premium. Now. For. Uh, I had. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get it. Oh, next month. Welcome to the North Carolina Motor Speedway for the 28th annual competition. I'm going to get my Twitch payout. I'll get my premium back. It's been a juggling. Barney, same old thing. We rob Peter, pay Paul. You know, you, you got to get in a situation, no mistakes. If you make a mistake, it's going to cost you a penalty. NASCAR is going to tack it on. You can't afford one. Consistency. Reach down within yourself. Come up with a good stop. 33 cars are sitting on pit road. The competition will be getting underway in just a moment. We'll be right back. Don't go away. That's Tim Brewer. I worked for him in 97. Very cool guy. I have a story there, but it's more like personal versus, like not personal like me, but he stood up for me when the crew was being a bunch of d dumbasses because my husband was having an affair. <laughs> Anyway, but it's all this commercials. Bushnell is number one. No. For a wide selection of Bushnell and Bausch and Lomb products, focus in on the Sports Authority. The Sports Authority has a great selection of firearms and bows from Browning, and to keep them secure, check out Browning gun safes. Welcome back to the North Carolina Motor Speedway competition. About I'll be right back. And Tim Brewer. An unusual situation today. The defending world champions will be the first team out. Is that good for them or is that bad? Barney, I think it's a positive for Betty Perry and Rusty Wallace and those guys down there because as a rule, as you sat there and build, you get nervous. It's a situation where you might make a mistake. Somebody lays down a good time. You've got to reach down inside yourself and come up with something better. Now, I think it's better to go first, give them something to shoot at, and I think Buddy Parrott and Rusty Wallace is going to do that right off the bat. Well, they're certainly good enough to do it. Let's go down the pit road right now, and Bill Weber will give us an explanation. Horny, these stops are electronically timed, so the real race begins right here. Now, there won't be any speeding tickets on pit road today because that rule is way for this competition. But there are instructions that must be followed and Gary Nelson penalties that you guys will be enforcing today. Tell us about some of them. Well, there's penalties for about everything. Gary Nelson like right there. That's so cool much stuff. stuff. I don't know. Time, but the primary things are man over the wall too soon. So we've got a signal that... Benny, all into nostalgia. That guy is cool as heck. Gary Nelson was a pretty, pretty good NASCAR official. They'll be in the air and he knew what he was doing. Trying to, they're not on the pavement, but getting out to the car as quickly as they can. Uh, second penalty, or the second thing that's probably more obvious is the loose lug nuts. That, that seems to get them all every week or every time we do this every year. Uh, a lot of guys have loose lug nuts that have. For anyone that's watching, thank you. I know that. In the lug nuts after a lot of times the ads I'll snooze them if I can catch them because I don't care that they run but I know I have to have them for affiliate so when I can't snooze them no more they run one <laughs> and it's supposed to be only a minute cans of fuel now they'll all be aiming to break the world held by the Miller genuine draft team but he parrot is that crew chief and he's with my colleague Barney Hall Thanks, Bill. He's MRN. Oh, Randy, he's my man. He He's a really cool guy. One of the Pembertons from Modifieds. And we hung out at the track here and there and, like, go for coffee now and then. That number, but Scott Robinson was talking, you know, it'd be awful nice to... I miss him so much. I wanted him to help me write Dad's book. I might have to get with Bones. One point nine seven seven or something like that. So it'd be awful nice to do four tires today. In fact, that's who I got to contact, to be honest. Certainly confident, but not overconfident. Anything can happen in about 20 seconds. Back to you, Bonnie. Well, Buddy Parrott doesn't seem to have any nerve problem here this afternoon. He looks like he's ready. And in just a moment, Tim Brewer, the competition... I'll tell you, I'm almost finished with understanding the career part. This was some of the... The 94 was confusing to me. 95 is a little clearer. 96 is pretty clear. 97 gets a little foggy. But I'm pretty clear on that with what Dad did. 98 to 2004. That's where it gets all a little cloudy again. But now I've got the sequence. I could actually make a timeline. 
be more trouble than it was worth. Are you frustrated trying to I worked as a distance phone bill? Shit. Make it easier, simpler. You oh, this is their own commercials. I worked as a um spend twenty five dollars a month on AT and T and we support literary agent for a little bit, so I understand grammar and I can actually write even though I talk like a southerner. Anywhere in the USA. Guaranteed I understand grammar because I'm kinda bilingual and stuff, so and I can call whoever I want. I have a lot of little odd things I've had to do in my life. <laughs> TNN is the greatest, though, like Pop said. Underway, here comes the first team. Rusty Wallace, they're the defending champions, and Tim, a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on them, but they don't feel anything right now, Barney. The butterfly's gone away. He's doing what comes natural right now. Todd Kerr, he just went after that tie right there. My husband got to compete in one with Lake in 96. They did so well, like they were going to win, except they had one lug, not close. Down and away, and the base time on this is going to be a world record night. I still remember the crew. In fact, I'm friends on Facebook with Chris, who was one of our tire guy. He was our tire guy. He moved down here. He's just one town north of me now. It's kind of cool. He worked for other teams after Lake. Well, I don't know yet. We're going around it right now. Man. Man. Some of the best. These are my heroes. Okay, these crew chiefs, they're all my heroes. What I heard them say, that'll take them right out of it, Tim. Oh, the Wood Brothers. Situation to be in right now. Motion's going to run high. Ty, he's still, still doing good. Gary Nelson. Feel it. Did you guys not know exactly what the torque was or, or, or what happened? Well, we torqued things down in the garage. I watched the torque in the garage and I sat there and watched the boy hit the lug nuts on the left rear. And I mean, they stayed on forever. Come down here and they turned a little bit. No big deal. Hey. We won last year. Yeah, it's got to be a disappointment for you to have those plugs not tight. What do you say? Stuff happens. That's right. God almighty, I was so lucky to know these Here's Mark Martin coming into the Valvoline people. Car. That is a great view of what the driver sees as he tries to find the pit and put it on the money, Tim. Yeah, it's a great view from where Steve Mills at also, Barney. Happy Friday, guys. Thank you for coming in and watching. And this is the glory days of racing, man. This is when it, it, it was so... They got a good time. Important, but this is just a pit crew competition, and like I say, I worked in that side of things, so I have a special warmth in my heart for the pit crews and what they do for the sport. And they all, like me, had a regular full-time job in real life. Most of them, very few, worked in the shop full-time. And if they did, three, four hundred dollars a week. I mean, it wasn't big, big. Maybe more. To be honest, in 96, 97, I think my ex-husband made like 700 a week, plus per diem as a truck driver. Wasn't much money. When I scored, I got per diem plus hotel, transport, and like 150 bucks. But in addition to, but it was worth it to do it. My God, you know, I would have done it for free. I have done it for free. Barney, I'm with Ray Abraham. Ray, you guys have one historic two tires. He's a modified driver from my past. Four tires stopped here this morning. It'd be real great for these guys. They work real hard, and I'm real proud of them. You know, I just told them, you know, do the best they can, and and however good they do, it's just an honor to be here. You know, and uh, it, it's nice a Unical to. to give these guys a chance to showcase their talent so we're just happy to be here but i think we're gonna do good. you guys been working on this at all uh these guys have you know i, I really can't take any credit they, this pit crew kind of runs itself so they, they've been working awful hard i know they want this real he's not yeah. clinging so the storms might be passed you guys all ready george you set okay that's it hey, Mike, put her in the hole easy buddy now nice and easy right in the crews not only were athletic and had their own training room, but they also knew about racing. They could work on the car, and that's important. Now, no. I know nowadays they have a lot of athletes, which helps, yes. If they have a racing background, that is so important. No joke. And actually, your speed is in your jack, man, to be honest. Because usually the tires have gone on before. He gets around. 19363 Ray. 
I mean, loosen before he gets around, if you know what I mean. All these lug nuts are tight, and uh, just, uh, boy, the guys have done a great job. If, if they're all tight, and even if they're not, they've done a great job. I want to see George Belfast get out there. Zing, 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 zing. I mean, I watch him, and it, if he's ever streaming at the at the bush races or the cup uh, truck races he's a tire changer for the left rear i mean the rear right rear left rear they run themselves andy papa did a great job with those guys they work i cannot watch and talk this is north carolina rockingham that's cool as hell they've done a great job well, we'll see if it holds up. Well, thank you. My ex did it at Charlotte. They had already decided they wanted the ring. They didn't want the $1,000. It was the bragging rights. I don't blame them. I would have took the ring, too. Three, four seconds, no penalty. Jeremy Mayfield in the finger hut forward, 22.757 seconds, no penalty. Here's Jeff Burton in the Rebestus car, 25.739 seconds, no penalty for them either. I interviewed on that team for an accounting position or office or something. It was going so good until I said who my dad was, and he said, well, we'll let you know. I was like, oh, shit. They were so nervous about competitors. Quick stop there. A little slip on that tire right there. That could have been disastrous. Jackman recovers nicely, gets it under there. Dad told me I'd be better off putting my hair up in a ponytail. That's going to be a good time. In fact, it's good for... And putting on a hat and jeans and apply for the garage. <laughs> How was it? It's not, no penalty? Probably right. Do you do anything differently when you practice for these championships? Do you do anything differently than in a normal pit stop or not? Well, some I came into money now. Regular routine, just like we always do. How were the nerves before you went out? I would have a team at New Smyrna or something, maybe a 602 mod or something. I would love to do that. This is the look at the top five. That would be so fun have the iris and anyone like well we've seen a little bit of everything thus far in the involved in iris and could room. drive it there's still a lot of guys to go that could win that thing. <laughs> i shouldn't say that that i choose <laughs> i have a few in mind that can drive the hell out of a 602 i'm sure and they're not ready to roll over and play dead yet well a lot of cars yet to go don't go away we'll be right back my son as well. He, my son actually can work on a car though, as well as drive, so he's just getting old. You've got the right to play bingo, the right to monster truck rallies, and the right to race Grand National Racing. You've got to go. Pit crew cop. So, oh, sorry guys. Back at the North Carolina Motor Speedway with Tim Brewer. Here's another one of the cars in competition, the Kodak car. Slug nuts will make their time 28. Great team. Seconds. Great team. Richard Childress is four-time defending champions of the Unical Pit Crew race. Total when I say great team, mechanical, six seconds. crew, everything. Here's the Meineke car, Joe Nemechek, the driver. 23.68, no penalties. GG. Seven, Greg Sachs, 26.316, one penalty, too much fuel oh. left in the dunk can. Oh, they're, they're a little team. Guys don't get into it. Look at the intensity on Brett Bodine, little team. Waiting for Brett Bodine in the car. And you got Barney Boyd there with a the gas can. He just went over the. How do I know that? <laughs> these guys here you got a pretty good opportunity to for a good finish today, Barney. Good stop on the right side of the car. Jackman comes around. If he hits it on the money, they may pick up a little time. Look at these left side guys here. Right together. Dead heat, Barney. That's unusual. They do both tires and the cars away. Woo! Good job, Marky. 20.791. Boy, that's a great time, and it's going to be good for second place if it holds up. Let's see if there's any. I guess that's why they use athletes. Zero all the way. Good job, no penalties. Uh, guys did a good job. They've been doing it all year, pretty solid. Uh, it makes my job easier. I'm telling you, I got all the confidence in the world and uh, call those pit stops whenever we need. <laughs> I I, I love racing. I really do. I wish I could own a car. I knew how to market them and everything in the old school way. They made them a little practice stand. They go out there at lunch. But we gotta win. Winning's the drug. That's why you do it. 
Kenny Wallace brings the Texaco Haviland Ford in. 21 Kenny points. Kenny Wallace. Six, oh. Eight, no penalty. Jeff Bodine's X-side battery, 42.180 seconds. No. Ernie was hurt in a race. That's why. I, I fast-forwarded to further down the order of the races, like toward the end of the season. 21.966 seconds. No penalties. Darrell Walker's Western Auto Crew trying to pump each other up a little bit, Tim. It's Friday night. In the background, he was After this, I'm going to check the uh, flow racing schedule. Well for Darryl to bring it in. Now, they feel like they can get a good stop here today. I can't play flow racing, unfortunately, on uh, on this, but I think Stafford has a race tonight. I'm going to check who's scheduled to race this weekend on flow. He plants it right on the So I can plan my weekend. I know there's coming in there. Truck, bush, cup. <laughs> You're conservative. He's gonna tighten about six there. It looks like. But I told you already how much. Oh, if you're a little bit slow. I like the short track, oh, and I wanted to say that's one of my favorite schemes in racing, right there. Yes, man, chasing that car. Looks like he's a little bit. It's just such a sharp-looking car. That's gonna be a good time, and if they don't have any penalties, it may be good for about fourth place. Zero. That will be good for fourth place. Hey, Pete. Take a look at how some more of the cars do. Here. The camaraderie of the pit crews all amongst each other was really nice, too. It was an ex experience that Bandit, last appearance. I was lucky to be around, too. They all really Five, eight, nine. joked around with each other and... Rick like healthy competition, I guess. Three, four, oh seconds. Little excess fuel left in the can. Ward Burton, Hardy Chevrolet. Three loose lug nuts. Total time, 33.566 seconds. Barry Dodson of Kyle Petty's team. Let's get his thoughts. Barry Dodson. Barry. Watching hand, waiting for Kyle Petty. How about this one? Better into these. Well, I don't know. You know, we, this is a, a mighty good pit crew, you know, and I've been lucky enough to win the thing three times. He had They've seen a personal tragedy in his family. He lost time and two no children problem. in a bad wreck. and They're awful good kind of dropped out of reason. Has been Very smart man. Times, and here comes Kyle Petty. Let's see if he plants him. Hey, well, brought the car in real smooth right there. Barry Dodson, he was our jack man here in 1982 when we won. Uh, looks like the guys on the right side down and away. Good stop as they move to the left side so far. There's the fuel man. Looks like Jerry had a little problem hooking up with the fuel receiver there, Barney. Yeah, that'll cost him just a little bit. The car is down and away. That's going to be a good stop. Zero all the way. Pretty good stop, Barry. Good stop for the guys. Like I say, they're good, and uh, they're good on Sundays. We get the car up there and in the pit stop fail. Here's the owner of the quality care Ford, Bud Moore, pumping his team up. Wow. Talking to him as they get ready to make them stop. You ready? You got to do it. Rip. Yep. Heroes. That's Donnie okay, Lingo, the crew chief. Warm your brakes up a little bit to come around. Very good point that Bud just made. The car's been sitting there for quite some time. The brakes are cold and need a little heat in before the stop really effective on it. Lake Speed drops her in there. Now, this team won this thing a couple of years ago. Let's see if they can do it again. One of the older guys in the business, a lot of experience. Harold Stott right there on the right rear. If there's experience, he's the man. Sam was a ca tire carrier. Before they're ready. Boy, that could have been disastrous. That could have been real bad for Harold right there. Like I said, experienced people, you know, he just pulled out when he seen the wheel start to move. You know, the front guy's got the benefit. It's not spinning. That rear wheel could have been really bad for Harold there. This is not all fun and games if you watch it. Harold stopped shaking his hand, but he's lucky he didn't get it broken. And Barney, here is Gary Dehart, and Gary, you're one of the last guys to run here. you got to beat your teammates. And that shows you how difficult they, 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 uh, everybody's timing is. Good job. Those guys. Or how important everybody's timing is. They pit practice almost every other day, and, and what can you say? They've done a good job. We're going to try our best, though, to beat them. <laughs> this is the last car that will have a chance to beat Jeff Gordon's team. Terry Labonte brings the Kellogg's car in. Let's see if they do a good one. Hendricks team as well. Yeah, he's done a good job for us in the past. A lot of good guys on this team. Good stop on the right side. Jeff Gordon's guys looking on. They're worried. Might be Slugger on the front tire. Hold on a time or two before it came up off the ground right there. It's going to I got to see if I can see. Yeah, that's Slugger on the front tire. He was from Maine. And Jeff Gordon's guys know they've clinched it today in the Unical Pit Crew Championship. Time to reap rewards right now, Barney. You know, it's it's uh, the pressure's off. It's time to just sit back and enjoy it. 
here's a look at today's rundown. And I think it's certainly worth noting that all the top ten finishers broke world hmm. records. Barney, we'd like to give a call to Harry Gant today in the Stole Bandit last appearance in the Unicow Pit Crew race. He and Charlie Presley. The well, he did okay. Do better. That's actually about where he finishes in points, uh, to be honest. Harry. Big. Ain't that kind of a weird feeling? I think he finished 16th in points that year. Well, Rusty Wallace and the guys failed to defend their title today, Tim Brewer, but it looks like we've got brand new winners, and once in a while that'll happen. Sure does, Barney. You know, it's, it's one of those deals, the old guys, we've been around for a long time. It's kind of time for us to move over. Rusty and the guys, you know, they've been dominating on pit road all year. You know, today they had a bad stop, but you got the new regime with Ray Abraham and those guys moving in. Uh, they did a simple, basic job, no mistakes, no errors, and they came out on top. Well, let's go down to Victory Lane. There should be some happy folks down there right now. Ray, congratulations. I know this means a lot to you guys. It really does. Um, I'm so proud of this team. These guys, uh, they took it on their own. Uh, they they handled the, the pit stops on their own, and uh, Andy Papathana CU has done a great job with these guys. He used to be our jack man, uh, hurt his back, can't jack anymore. Now he trains the pit crew, and, and really this is... Uh, a lot, a lot of victory seat for training and pit crew. There's well, another job. Drive the car, but we know Jeff. This Be is the guy that shine, and they really did, didn't they? Oh, gives you all the hats. <laughs> you know, these guys they've had great stops all year long, and uh, I'm really proud of them. And they're young, they're aggressive, like this whole team is, and that's what makes us, uh, you know, go out there and, and, and try to win and, and be brave at times and make some big decisions. But they really came through today. Uh, it, I think it's neat that it's towards the end of this season, and uh, w this is going to get our morale back up. You know, we've had uh, had a couple weeks where we really needed some spirit, and boy, we got it now. This is I'm real pumped up. He just won the Crew Chief of the Year award, and uh, now these guys are winning the World Championship Pit Crew t uh, competition. Did you really put this thing back? Uh, well, yeah, it was getting in a trailer, and I'll tell you, it's a it's a great deal, and, and like to thank the people at Unical for giving these guys a chance to showcase their talents, because uh, it uh, today's their day. I'm really proud of them. Well, Barney, this is a great season for this team continues. Winners today in the 1994 Unical. Look at the five lug nuts on there. That's pretty cool. It's a cool trophy. Well, it's all over here. See what else we got. A little bit of everything. Like to thank you for slick 50. Yeah. Next year you're going to be on Phoenix. It's the end of kind of the end of the season. On behalf of Cranford. Haas Racing, which is a new team that we're putting together for next year. We'd like to thank Unical, North Carolina Motor Speedway. Grandpa's Haas. It's been a pleasure working with you. For 95. He was 97 with Bodo. Pit Road for us and Bill. Mm. And for all our crew here at Rockingham, this is... I don't really have anything else planned, uh, to be honest. What would be really cool, I guess, would be to, like... Chevy Silverado. With the Probably a uh, rate out, to be honest. And let me see who's on. Or if you have suggestions, I would rate out to whoever you suggest. I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. <laughs> let me see what's live right now. Wonder if we have a really cool view of the ocean today. That's not good. This is serious. There's a hurricane actually coming across toward Texas, southern Texas. Oh, I know what I wanted to check out. What the heck was coming up on uh on um flow racing? Yeah, let's see what's coming up this week on the schedule. Do, 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 do. Like, I can't play no videos, and I don't think I'll get in trouble for doing this, but just to look at their format, you bring it up. I know it's super expensive. I'm lucky enough to have a sponsor for this. Let me see, pavement. Okay, pavement schedule. News schedule nope wait. back <laughs> trying to look at it cross away schedule all right 
exploration. I don't see. Yeah, Stafford. I'm watching that tonight. Firecracker 300, uh, 30 at Stafford. It might be something for the other classes. It says watch right now. I'm not going to turn it on yet. It doesn't start till 6, I think. But, um, yeah. That's weird. Wow. How to watch. It says watch, but it's not on. Not started yet. There you go. See, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so that is on tomorrow. I mean, tonight. So that's what I'll be doing in a couple hours. Having at least this tabbed up. And back to pavement. Let me see. Schedule again. They have so much news. Tomorrow, though, this thing will be full. Saturday. Yep. Lots of racing. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. NASCAR. Bowman Gray. Langley. Florence. Yeah, so there's a lot of racing this weekend. Sunday, I don't think they have a lot covered. No. The big day is Saturday. Well, NASCAR. Cool stuff. North Carolina something. What is this? Oh, NASCAR Canada at Riverside. I thought it said North Carolina. Told you I'm blind, y'all. So anyway. Yeah, that's fun to find out. I'm looking here to see if anybody's online. Yeah. We can do it. Send you to a really good driver. Has no interest in driving in real life. But he's one that's got that skill. I'll tell you who else is like confused when you look at this new raid screen. You'll like this guy. You probably already follow him. He's super duper duper good. All right, see y'all later. Get off my glasses so I can see far away. Love y'all. I'll be back with a couple of the ending of 94 and into 95. Or I might just jump to 95. I think I might just jump. But anyway, see y'all. Bye. Love y'all. is happening. Escape. Wait, what's this back off, dude?